Hello my quilting friends! Today we're going to learn a new quilting design called Fuse Fire. It's a really beautiful flame inspired design and it's going to look great in your block for the machine quilting block party. So let's try it out first on a practice sandwich and get some tips and tricks on how this new design works. So here's what Fuse Fire looks quilted in a row through my little practice sandwich. We're gonna get started right here. I've stitched a wiggly line and then I've just simply travel stitched back to the beginning, to the starting point. And now I'm gonna stitch around it with a wiggly flame-like echo. So I'm gonna come to a point and wiggle on back. And I wanna hit that same starting point. And this is a pivoting design. That means we're gonna pivot an echo off that point. It kind of builds up a little bit more thread there. It makes it look really dramatic and it stands out nicely on your quilt. So here I'm echoing around again. And I'm not gonna go all the way back to the starting point, but I am gonna travel stitch just a bit along that previous line. So here I'm travel stitching up and I've just got this like little weird pocket. I think I'm gonna run against this flame shape and sneak my way back out. One of the things about quilting any design is you kind of have to make up the rules as you go in the weird areas. Sometimes the spaces in your quilt don't always work out for a design perfectly. Um, a good tip if you're kind of trying to figure out what to do is grab your marking pencil and work through a few ideas right there on the quilt. And that can sometimes stop you from potentially stitching a mistake that you don't like and having to rip it out. So here I'm stitching in a totally different direction. Start with my wiggly line. Now I'm stitching all the way back. And now this is a situation where I'm gonna to have to cut off this design because I just don't have enough space to do, to stitch all the way around it. So I'm gonna travel stitch up, branch off with my wiggly flame shape, come to a point, and then I'm just gonna run it up against this outline of my quilting space. And this could be, you know, the outline of a block. This could be the uh, ditches of a block if you're stitching in the ditch. You can absolutely travel stitch in the ditch anytime you need to. And so that got me exactly where I needed to go. So I was able to branch out and finish up that shape. And now I can form another one right here in between. So again, the rules of the design are stitch a wiggly line, travel stitch back, branch out, pivot and echo with a wiggly flame shape. Return to that starting point if you can, and pivot and echo again. And you can do as many pivots and echoes as you want. There's no set number, set rule. I sometimes look at it, well, I kind of just stop and look at my quilt, and I figure out if there is any spaces that I want to fill in. So right here I've got this little narrow space, and I've got this little weird area here. So I might decide, okay, let's do one more echo. This is gonna get me around the shape. I can kind of fill in all the way to that edge. That's just fine. Travel stitch and wiggle back here. And then I can fill in this little odd area just with maybe a bit of the design kind of slightly cut off. I'm gonna do the travel stitching, but I'm just going to do a few wiggly lines here and it's gonna maintain the look and kind of keep its consistency with the rest of the design. So travel stitching, the reason we use it is to get from one area to another without having to break thread. I'm wanting to get all the way over here and I don't wanna to have to break thread here just to pull up right here. So I travel stitched here and now I'm gonna travel stitch up. And that is absolutely allowed. I like to minimize thread breaks simply because to tie off those threads and bury them and it just makes more sense to throw a little bit more thread at it and put a little bit more uh, travel stitching in the design and it looks good too. Now, if your travel stitching is a little sloppy, like mine's a little sloppy here, that's okay. Again, throw more thread at it, don't rip it out. Just go back in and stitch over it again. There's no rule that says that you can't do that. So here I threw a little bit more thread at it. That wiggly line is now gonna stand out and be so much prettier on the surface. And no one will know that the reason it was, it's looking like that is because I was stitching a little sloppy. 
few points that you might struggle with. If you start building up too much thread, you might see some breakage or uh, skipping stitches. Just watch out for that. And then also watch out for this point. You focus on what you're doing and make that nice sharp transition, that, that direction change, and that'll work out good too. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you'll get on your machine and give Fuse Fire a try. It's a lot of skill building elements to this design, like travel stitching and echoing, that you really need a master in order to be comfortable free motion quilting. So this design is going to be a great one to get the hang of. You know, spend a little bit of time stitching it on a practice sandwich, or maybe even try stitching it on a real quilt. On Monday, we're going to learn how to take this design and stitch it over block number two for the machine quilting block party. Of course, I really hope that you'll subscribe to our videos so you don't miss out on any of the cool quilting inspiration coming out every week. Until next time, let's go quilt.